Hey, free to play gang, welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about three of my favorite support espers. Now, the ones that I'm gonna talk about, they are going to be legendary espers, one of which is easily obtainable and the other two only comes from the gacha. And I want to show you how well they function, especially in endgame PvP. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there, you may not necessarily know like the true potential of your espers. So like, for example, when us content creators release tier lists, you'll be like, okay, I understand that this character is S rank, but it doesn't seem that way when I try it out. So hopefully in this video, it gives you a little bit of an idea of why these espers are so powerful. Now, if you find that this video is going to be helpful for you, do consider subscribing as subscribing is free and you can always change your mind afterwards. Now for the first Esper, we're going to be talking a little bit about Gabrielle. Now she is a strong support Esper that can be obtained through fusion, so she's easily accessible to everyone. Now let's take a look at why she is so good. Let's take a look at Broadside. Attacks all enemies 3 times dealing total damage equal to 80% of attack. Now each attack has a 50% chance of inflicting defense down for 2 turns. So this skill is going to be so useful in landing a lot of defense break for all kinds of content. Now this is arguably her most useful skill, this is Rush. Blesses all allied espers with immunity and defense up for 2 turns, and then you deal damage to all enemies equal to 105% of attack with an added attack down debuff for 2 turns. This has to be the best initiator in PvP because the immunity, the defense up buff, and the attack debuff is so strong. Cause now the opponent needs to do 2 things. Number 1, they need to strip away all of your buffs, and number 2, they need to cleanse away their debuffs. In other words, they need to use 2 espers just to counter 1 of your esper. And finally, her leader buff is very useful especially in the early game. This increases your allies HP by 30%, which is very helpful in a lot of ritual content, and possibly in the cute miracle as well. I think till date, I still use her as a leader for cute miracle. But let's take a look at the relics that I'm running her with. This is going to be pretty clear cut for a lot of you guys. So my preference is to run her with Windwalker and Adamantine sets, cause I think this makes the most sense. Her base HP is so high, therefore Adamantine is going to be very helpful. And she also has the highest base speed in the game alongside with Unas, which makes her an ideal choice for Windwalker. So as long as she moves first, she's going to be able to drop all of those buffs on your team, and the attack debuff on the enemy side, and this is why it's so important for her to be super fast. Now next on my lineup, this is going to be an awesome discussion. I think Clara is extremely, extremely broken. So let's quickly take a look at her skills. So skill 1, attacks an enemy twice, dealing total damage equal to 90% of attack, and heals two allies with the lowest HP for 5% of her max HP. Now there is one reason why this is so powerful, and that is that this scales off her own max HP, which means that if you make her really tanky, her first skill is going to heal a lot. Now let's move on straight to her third skill first, this is the Hymn of Life, boosts team-wide AP by 20% and recovers 25% of max HP, goes up to 30%. Now this skill is extremely broken and you will know why in just a bit. Actually I lied, it's not this skill that's broken, it's her passive Queen's Protection. Now let me paraphrase this for you, okay, you remove 2 debuffs when granting a heal to any ally and grants immunity for 1 extra turn if the target has no debuffs. At the same time, 120% of the overflowing heal is converted into a shield for 2 turns. So this obviously benefits both her skill 1 and her skill 3, and this also means that her skill 1 has the potential to remove up to 4 debuffs. And her third skill is going to be not only just a team-wide AP push, but it's also a cleanser, it's also an immunity buff, and it's also a shield buff. Now let's move on to her relics, and I'm going to discuss two different builds. So the first one is obviously going to be my build, this is going to be Ocean Waves and Avatara. Now this is so good because it ramps up a lot of her third skill as much as possible. So I'm very interested in making sure that she uses her third skill as much as possible because it is so broken. And as for the Avatara over here, if she receives some damage from the opposing side, she would have a 25% chance to counter attack and deploy a lot of heals. And this makes your team especially tanky, especially against like characters such as Gabriel who hits everyone on your lineup. So she is extremely strong with the Avatara build. Now the second build is just one slight difference, instead of Ocean Waves, we are going with Windwalker. And the reason is pretty clear, she has an insane base speed, and she's probably like the second or third fastest Esper in the game. So this means that if you make her super fast, she's gonna go first, and she can AP push your entire team, grant a shield buff, and grant you immunity as well. All from one third skill. Alright, now this is going to be a very special Esper to me, I think that she is probably one of my best support Espers, and this is Jin Yu Yao. Now a lot of people are finding trouble understanding why she is so good, but even though this is going to be a PvP showcase, she doesn't just shine in PvP, she shines very well in PvE as well, especially a Temporal Tower and the Cube Miracle. So in order to understand why, let's take a look at her skills in detail, right? So deals damage equal to 110% of attack to an enemy with a 75% chance of inflicting stun for one turn. 
Now you boost your own AP by 25% if the target has a debuff. So this skill is so good in deploying stuns, not only do you have a, such a good chance of you landing a stun, it has no cooldowns, and furthermore your AP even increases if you're attacking someone who has any kind of debuffs. So she's gonna take a whole lot of turns and land a lot of stuns. Now we are gonna continue on with her third skill first before her passive, so transfers all debuffs on the team to an enemy and deals damage to the target equal to 13% of her max HP. So this skill is extremely broken and I will have to show you in order for you to understand why this is the case. So before that, let's take a look at her passive first. So immune to all disables and you remove a random debuff other than an immobile or rather disable from all allied aspers at the start of each turn and you heal them for 5% of their max HP. You then increase her AP by 20% when an allied asper receives any kinds of debuffs and and this can only be triggered once per turn, which is not her turn. So essentially, if let's say the enemy's Longmian does some debuffs on your team, her AP goes up by 20%, and if they follow up with like let's say a Lin Xiao who does an AoE defense break, her AP goes up by yet another 20%. Now let's take a look at the way I'm building her. I think this is probably the most optimal build right now. So I'm running her with Windwalker so that she takes a lot of turns and Avatara as well. Now Avatara is going to be so useful here because her first skill does a lot of stuns and naturally if the enemy attacks you and the enemy has a debuff and you counter attack, you are going to gain a 25% AP push. So essentially she gains a lot of turns using Avatara as well. So the more turns that she takes, the more times that she can cleanse debuffs from your team and the more frequently she can use her third skill to transfer all of her debuffs on to one enemy. So let's take a look at how this trio works in practice. I feel like they synergize perfectly well together. So on one hand, you have an insane buffer like Gabrielle. On the other hand, you have an insane healer like Clara. And on the other hand, if you have three hands, you also have an insane cleanser on your team. So let's take a look at how this fight goes. Now the opposing side moves first because they are very fast. And now my entire team is frozen. And now we are receiving more debuffs and that pushes our Jin Yu Yao to the top. And because she cannot be frozen, she's able to use her third skill to transfer all of the stuns to the enemy's DPS. And that's where Gabrielle comes in and lands a powerful buff. And then immediately afterwards, Clara can use her third skill to give my entire team an AP push and a big shield. And of course, cleansing any debuffs along the way. So we basically won this fight because we were able to counter attack immediately because of Jin Yu Yao. And then we are so well protected because of Gabrielle and Clara. So because of our powerful counter play, we are able to win this just like that. And honestly, this team is so powerful not because it counters the speed meta, but it also counters the end game tanky meta. So from here on, the fight is really in the bag. There's nothing much else that I can say about it. This is also what the Temporal Tower looks like. Everyone just being stunned on the other side. So Jin Yu Yao has so much value over here. And Gabrielle makes things a lot easier by using her second skill for the defense break. So we are able to chip away at their HP a lot easier. And it is extremely scary to the opposing team, especially if they are a speed cleave comp. So we end the fight over here, let's move on to the next one. So this is pretty similar, they are running with a Nama and a Lin Xiao which could obliterate my team, right? I mean, they are definitely going to go first, they are going to land AoE defense breaks and they are going to use a huge nuke on my team. So how is it possible that I can survive? Let's take a look. Okay, so we get hit by the TA that pushes their AP a little bit and now they use their Longmia to stun all of us. And then here comes the AoE defense break, but okay, by sheer luck we got our immunity buff. That is not really a problem though, because Jin Yu Yao moves next. Now she frees my team from the defense breaks and being frozen. So basically, if turn 1 you're not able to cleave my comp, that's about it. It's gonna be very hard for you to have a counter play. And you might have noticed that we were completely resisted. So that may happen if your Jin Yu Yao doesn't have enough accuracy like I do. But I think one more thing to add about Jin Yu Yao is that her AP push actually happens even if your entire team is immune. So as long as the enemy attempts to debuff your team, that gives her the AP push. So it's not correct to say that immunity doesn't work well with Jin Yu Yao. She is still very functional that way. And of course you might have noticed that my Clara has just been an insane boon to my team. So whenever she takes a turn, she's gonna heal my Gabriel so much. So it's very important for her to be very fast. No matter what kind of relic set you're using her with. No matter if it's Ocean Waves or Wind Walker. So now we have this in the bag and we can just auto play right here. And this is basically my PvP team right now, which is helmed by three very powerful supports. And of course I'm not really discussing Tricky and Dona over here, but those guys, I have talked about them before. And for this video, I would just like to focus more on these three aspers and why they are so powerful, and especially since Gabrielle is completely available to you. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, it really helps the channel, and subscribe for more dislike content because I upload every single day. Now with that said, this has been Daddy Free to Play, and as always, I will see you in the next video.